did an interview with Drake Riggs at a recent submission underground, and he was asking me something along the lines that came up where I made the statement that Tony versus Khabib, the winner of that is the greatest lightweight of all time. And many people agree, but many people pushed back. I saw it, I made it at bloodyelbow.com, did a piece, got picked up by the underground. And just to elaborate on that thought, because I was a little bit surprised that I was challenged. I, I was a little bit surprised that anybody challenged that statement. To, to me, it seemed like a pretty simple statement, maybe even a lazy statement. But I did feel like I was stating the obvious. And when some people pushed back, here's the thing. And we all have to agree to this because this is just the, the rules of the sport. But when you show up into combat, whatever you have done or accomplished is on the line every single time, right? If you show up with the world championship, even if your opponent in large part doesn't have near the pedigree or the resume or the accomplishments that you do, everything you did is still on the line. The night that Buster Douglas beat the undefeated Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas took everything away. Even if their amateur paths weren't world teams for Buster or Olympic, you know, dreams for Buster and their, and their professional paths weren't the same either, it doesn't matter. If Mike brings it to the ring and Buster beats, Buster takes it all. Everything's on the table. And the reason I say that is Khabib at 28 and 0, perfectly undefeated world champion who's not even, not only has not lost a fight, has only lost one round ever in his life. It would just seem to me that Khabib would have a pretty good foothold to be the greatest lightweight ever. It would seem that that topic is kind of done. As a matter of fact, I think you put Khabib at any weight you wanted to. If you win 28 straight, including a world championship, oh, and by the way, you only drop one round. Oh, and I should add, you have more 10-8 rounds than any fighter in history. It would just seem that he brings the greatest title with him wherever he goes. So I feel that it was a lazy statement by me and even a statement that was obvious to say that the winner of this leaves the greatest of all time. Now, I think some of the pushback wasn't on Khabib's side. I think many people were happy to go, yeah, Chael, you're right. I mean, Khabib's done it and he's 128, but Tony sure is something special, but the greatest of all time. You're putting him in front of the Khabibs and the BJ Pens of the world. You're putting him in front of some really good fighters. I agree with that. I think that Tony does get to be in the conversation. Tony, after all, did win a championship belt, which, by the way, he never lost. He never lost that belt, but somehow the title has, has gone away. I think Tony gets to be part of that conversation. Maybe not the lock that Khabib is because of the 28 no, which is something very special. But if we do adhere to the initial premise that I'm making, which is when you get into combat and that referee says go, whether you're in the ring, on a mat, or in the cage, Whatever you have done and whatever you have accomplished is up for grabs. It all chips are in at all times and everything gets taken from you. If we adhere to that belief, which I think we need to, because that is the way it works, then the greatest of all time would also be up for grabs. It would leave with whichever guy got his hand raised. 